What are the three most common challenges that women face when trying to embrace their own feminine gifts? If you've been exploring what feminine energy is and you want to have more calm, relaxed presence in your life, then this video is for you. And if we haven't met yet, I'm Michelle Baker, creatrix of Art as a Soul Language. I help creative women in midlife unlock their purpose using art to listen to their soul wisdom. Okay, to begin, let's just make sure we're on the same page about masculine, feminine energy. First of all, we're not talking about man, woman. You have masculine and feminine energy within you. So just focus on yourself. And if you're a woman, you're going to have more feminine energy in your pie chart, if you will, than masculine energy. And the feminine is the receptive mode. So think of the yin yang symbol. They are contrary, but they fit together and work together to create a whole. So masculine energy is doing energy and feminine energy is receptive or being energy. And this is where the first challenge that women have come in is because they say, I don't, I, what do you mean being? Isn't that just not doing anything all day? So this really challenges most people that I work with because we live in such a patriarchal, do all the time, 24-7, 365 world that the idea of being this is so contrary to the norm that our initial impulse is that it must be doing nothing. And so it actually shows the inherent misunderstanding that we have around feminine energy in general, which is normal living in a patriarchy. But it's so important for women to understand this because it's one of the keys to why you feel burnt out all the time or tired or just like not connected with yourself in a deeper way. And it's because a large part of your energy is beingness. So what is it if it's not just doing nothing all day? Beingness is presence. It is your withness. So I want you to think about if you're feeling like really sad or emotional, who would you rather call a friend that has a lot of presence? They're able to list, just listen and breathe with you and maybe cry with you. Would you rather have that? Or would you rather have somebody that's like, okay, I'm going to take you shopping. Let's go to the mall. Right? So presence and beingness and withness is a beautiful quality that we can offer to people, especially when they are in a state of emotion. So therapists and healers bring this presence into our culture and into our lives. And it's something that's so valuable to have not only with yourself, but then it's also a gift that you can give to others. I, as a mom, I'm also thinking of what it's like for my daughter. If she's sad and she crying, she comes to me for comfort because I am the, the be with you person. And my husband being a strong masculine man is the fixer, you know? So he's more likely going to be like, do you need an ice pack? Right. And they're both beautiful. They're both compliments to each other. But when we are missing the beingness and the presence, presence, we are missing the ability to be with ourselves. And this is also consciousness itself, right? The reason people meditate is to become more aware. That is absolutely a being state. You cannot be fully conscious if you are constantly doing. So there is a certain amount of receptivity and sit back it, sit back with it ness for you to be in a conscious awareness state. The second challenge around feminine energy that most women don't really get is receiving. So receiving is again, part of the feminine within the masculine feminine balance and receiving doesn't just mean like, yeah, I can receive compliments. It's deeper than that. It's outwardly still like letting people do things for you. So for example, imagine that you're at home with your partner and they're cleaning up the house, but you were already like relaxing. Maybe you were reading or writing in your journal and they start cleaning. Would you be able to continue to enjoy your downtime and allow them to clean up the house without joining in? That's a great example of letting others do things for you. Or somebody volunteers like, hey, I can take that to your car to the shop for you, or I can do this for you. Could you actually easily and gratefully allow them to do it without getting 
guilty or weird feeling or having a tally in your head about how you're going to have to do something for them later to make it even. This also, the receiving happens on a food level. When you eat your food, do you actually get into a state where you are receiving the nourishment? Do you slow down enough and digest enough and allow yourself to be present with what's happening enough to actually allow the food to be absorbed by your body. And that ties into energy itself. Are you able to allow energy to come into your body? Can, do you take in what's around you, like from the earth? You can absorb the earth's energy and fill yourself up, but do you take the time to do that? Or do you have sort of like a wall up around you that doesn't let anything in? And most important, this leads to spiritual um, receiving and nourishment, because all of those forms of receiving are really a small microcosm of your ability to receive support from whatever your spiritual source is, God, universe, spirit, source, whatever you call it, receiving means that we're able to trust and allow ourselves to be guided by something that is bigger and wiser than we are. And if that feels challenging to you, or maybe you're like, yeah, I do want that, or I do do that, but I don't receive compliments from other, it's unlikely that that it's the case that you can in one place and not in another. So it's important to really get crystal clear on this. Like how much am I able to allow myself to be guided instead of feeling like I am all by myself or the one that's running the ship? And that leads to the third challenge that so many women have with reclaiming and, and embracing their feminine gifts is trust. This is inherently a feminine quality, the ability to trust, because it, again, is passive and receptive. And most women that I work with, at least, really struggle with trusting. And that's because of their own past experiences. It's not because they're just mean or bitter, it's because they really have found experiences in their life where they were not able to trust people. But the inability to trust causes a wall to come up around us. And that feeling like, oh, I've got to do it all myself. It's all on me. I don't have anybody else means that we're really not open to trusting and receiving. And going back to the spiritual lens, trust on the spiritual level is in, is is so important to being aligned and and feeling connected and not feeling like everything is on our backs so if you are burnt out and tired and feel like you're all alone then these three gifts of the feminine are part of what are wanting to be cultivated in you and i would love to help you on that journey so if you are resonating I want to invite you to my free Unlock Your Purpose Challenge that is specifically designed for creative women later in life who are wanting to reclaim their feminine and adjust their life so that they're not doing, doing, doing all the time and burnt out and are actually longing for that deeper spiritual connection and ability to trust not only God, Spirit, Universe, Divine, but also to trust themselves. So if that sounds delicious to you, I'm gonna put a link below this video in the comments so that you can come and join me and we will go through the challenge together.